Alistair McLeod. Welcome back, sir. It's my pleasure. Alistair, thank you very much for joining us. You know, uh, one of the hot topics out in the world these days is all the craziness going on in the United Kingdom, where the markets seem to have lost confidence in Liz Truss, the, the previous short prime minister. And then there was a huge problem with loss of confidence, and the Bank of England had to then go bail out uh, a lot of pension funds and start supporting the the bond market of the UK. So what's going on there? Because gold and silver were were having dramatic reactions up and down to this intervention mm -hmm. by the Bank of England. And that's, you know, as Wall Street Silver, that's why we pay attention. Why was this such a major issue going on? Well, I think the the effect on precious metals was um, really from the ebb and flow of concerns that you know, the whole sort of system was becoming destabilized. The fiat currency state system was being destabilized. And the concerns were really pretty real because um, with this, um, you know, LDI investment, basically what that is, is that pension funds who, who in a low interest rate environment can't make any returns um, compared with their obligations down the road. Um, what they do is they gear up um, their, you know, their, their, their operations through other entities mm. um, and try and, uh, you know, sort of, if you like, uh, you know, respond to this situation. And it, the, 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 the consequence is that they use derivatives and the derivatives are a mixture of credit default swaps on the, on the one hand, well, sorry, interest rate swaps. And the other thing that they use, of course, is, is, is uh, repos. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, they can repo up to seven times and the regulators, uh, you know, say, well, this is all right. But what it basically meant was that the whole of the pension fund industry on a fall in um, uh, values, if you like, gilt values, suddenly found that they had calls. And the only way they could meet the calls was basically to liquidate asset positions, ergo sell gilt. And so you had the potential for a real market collapse. Um, so it's it's interesting, I think, from one aspect, and that is that not a lot needs happen to happen before you trigger enormous derivative calls. So that's something which I think you know we should just sort of tuck in the back of our minds as as, as an important uh, factor. But returning to the politics of it, um, the interesting thing was that uh, trust well ahead of that budget which Kwarteng um, produced, uh, said exactly what her policies were going to be. And, you know, nobody worried about it. They thought, well, you know, fine, well, we'll wait and see what happens. <laughs> but when it actually happened, then all hell broke loose. But essentially, what Liz Truss was doing was she was trying to make one last, if you like, effort to move away from the government dominating the economy to, um, uh, you know, allowing the private sector to keep more of um, its profits, its earnings, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. because she knows that um, they do a far better job of growing the economy than um, than government. Government, you know, never, ever actually manages to achieve anything in terms of, um, you know, positive, you know, positive for the, the economy. So she knew that and that's what she was trying to achieve. But markets didn't like it and they didn't like it, I think, predominantly. And this is a lesson for us. All the major players in stock markets are Keynesians. Mm -hmm. um, and consequently, they do not like the disruption to the status quo. Any idea of, of going away from government control back into the uncertainty of markets is very, very strongly resisted. And that was what we saw. That's what's triggered. What we now have is we're back on track and that track i'm afraid for us brits is more and more government more and more control and the fact is we can't afford our government it's got far too expensive for us yes mm -hmm. they're going to increase taxes even more and when they fail to do that then they're going to have to bridge the gap by issuing more debt which put more simply basically means printing money so you know, this this is um, a situation of continuing deterioration and the one little attempt to try and get away from it 
was um, messed up, if you like. Uh, And, um, you know, consequently, that's it. We're on the way to, um, you know, the sort of, if you like, the the, the situation that happened in communist uh, in the Soviet bloc in, what was it, 1987, when the wall fell down, because it was no longer sustainable. We're on that path, which is very, very concerning. It feels like something's about to break out there in the system. And what, yeah. the point you made with derivatives, if, if with derivatives involved, especially banks like Deutsche Bank, that seems to be a, a ticking time bomb, uh, in the derivatives market, I mean, stuff can go south really quickly in this type of scenario. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the point which we need to understand about derivatives is that they increased from virtually zero, um, what, 40 years ago, to, I mean, the last figure we had from the Bank of International Settlements for OTC derivatives was $600 trillion equivalent. Yeah. You've got a further $100 trillion equivalent in regulated markets, basically futures and options. Now, I mean, these, these are, I mean, these are, these are uh, notional amounts, admittedly, but nevertheless, they do represent an amount of credit which is built up on the back of a long-term trend of declining interest rates. Now that that trend has reversed, it is clear to me that what is likely to happen almost certain to happen is that the level of outstanding derivatives are also going to reverse that's so in other words we've somehow got to lose a total of up to 700 trillion dollars equivalent worth of otc and futures derivatives and that's not going to happen without accidents occurring i'm afraid um it's going to have lots of knock-on effects and um if you look at the mortgage um, uh, industry. I mean, this, it doesn't quite work like this in America, I don't think, but I, but you would know better than I. But over here, typically we find that a mortgage provider, whether it's a bank or a building society, you know, like a savings and loan, as it were, um, what they will do is they will offer um, their customers or their borrowers, they will say, we will offer you a fixed rate of X percent for five years. And what they do is that if that is taken up, they then cover it if you like, in the OTC um, market. It's it's an interest rate swap deal, basically. That's what they do to secure the rate. And what they're doing is they're taking a margin out of what they can get in the market on a fixed rate for five years and then passing it on at a slightly higher rate to the mortgage borrower. Mm-hmm. That's going to end. Um, you know, that's that, that market is going to start contracting quite sharply. Mm-hmm. You've already got, I mean, we see with the problem with Credit Suisse that um, they're having to wind down their desks. They're shutting down derivative desks. They're trying to dispose of um, uh, derivative origination uh, departments. And, um, you know, they're not alone in this. This is really a real problem. So um, as far as we're concerned, this, I think, is of particular interest with respect to derivatives in the commodity space. Um, They're going to get reduced as well. 